Psalms chapter 103, verse 1 to 10. The Bible says it's a, it's, a, it's a psalm of thanksgiving of God's goodness, a psalm of David. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, and who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy who satisfies you with good as long as you live, as, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord, walks, the Lord walks vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He make known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Now this morning we are starting a, a, a series that is going to be uh, just for two weeks. And uh, my, my hope is that we are going to look at the power of, of praise, the power of worship, what happens when we praise God, what happens when we, when we worship. And when we talk about worship or praise, it's a bigger picture when our, our lives are supposed to be a worship unto God. But I'm going to try during this uh, series to be able to limit it to to music, to our words, and all of that as an action of praise. And in your notes, there is like an appendix that I added some of the Hebrew and the Greek word meaning of, of, of praise and worship. And I'm not going to go into that during this service. But my hope is that this becomes a weapon in your hand to fight when the attacks of the enemy get strong. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you so much this morning. We thank you that you are right here with us and that you are ready to minister to us. Our hearts are open, God. Our hearts are open. So, Lord, would you speak to us in a way like you alone can? Give me grace to speak your word in a way that is simple, so simple, but then in a way that is powerful, God, that will live from this place empowered to become instruments in your hands that know how to wage war uh, against life's attacks and life's challenges. So we give you praise for your presence in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, most often when we have an amazing thing happen in our lives, there is a wedding, there is a new child that is born, a new grandbaby. Celebration is easy. It's easy to sing, it's easy to shout, it's easy to praise. But there are also times when life is not going well. There are times even waking up and saying good morning to somebody is hard. You don't even want anybody to talk to you. The pressures of life are so hard and it's so tough. And most often that's the time when we don't want to open our voice to even sing a song. And if somebody tells you sing at that time, you're like, are you crazy? Do you really understand what's happening? Why should I sing when life is off? Why should I sing when things are so, so difficult? Uh, but what is amazing is that uh, worship to God is just such a powerful weapon our ability to sing in the middle of the storm, it's almost like taking, uh, how do they call this, powerful machine guns and just pumping on the enemy and like say, dead enemy, you are gone. Our ability, <laughs> our ability to sing in the middle of the storm is almost like that. And the text that we, 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 we last two weeks ago when I talked about, uh, and thank you, Kerry, she's not here for, for ministering last week. Wasn't she amazing? Yes. Uh, so thanks for stepping in. It's always good to have people who can step in when you're gone. And, and uh, so two weeks ago, I talked about the importance of fighting for the destiny of our children, the destiny of the people that we love, being able to go into warfare in prayer and not stop until we see them saved, until we see them delivered, until we see God set them free. Uh, but most often uh, when, we, when we talk about that, the only, the only weapon we think about is a weapon of prayer. So I want to be able to bring another weapon of fighting uh, where that brings a change and a transformation that is completely different. In the text that we read, that is one of the Psalms of David. And the, the book of Psalms is like 
filled with the songs. There are several other writers who write songs in the book of Psalms, but David is like the major author of the book of, of Psalms. He writes all of the songs unto God, and if you look at the way he writes the songs, you can tell like this guy is like, woo. His, his way of praising God was incredible. David praised God so much that even his own wife was ashamed and embarrassed of him because of how he danced. His clothes were falling. He was half naked and the, like all his thing was, all, all, only this part was covered and the wife was like, which kind of, why are you disgracing me like that? Have you ever been at times to a church service or a place where somebody's praising God so much you're like, man, you are just being extravagant and you become embarrassed for the person who is praising God. But guess what? At times you don't even know if that praise is what is saving that person's life. And so at times it's okay if you praise God and you feel like these people might think I'm so weird. They think I'm just being extravagant. Just praise. It is your weapon. Don't let anything hold that back. And David is singing and David is dancing and the wife gets so upset. And David comes from there and the wife is like saying, man, you are just, you humiliated me today. And God himself cursed the wife and she never had a child. Because that thing that David was doing, it, sound, it looked crazy and foolish. But David was giving his best praise unto God. And God's heart was like, yes, these are the kind of people I like. And then somebody else was behind. So when you see somebody doing being a little crazy, just leave them with God. Be careful not to be able to... Uh, and, and the, the, another thing when you look at the life of David is that his music was not just... You remember um, King Saul? He, was, he had the spirit that would come and torment him. And David would just come and play that string instrument. And the Bible says every time David played, the spirit would leave Saul. Like that's how powerful the music. It wasn't just music, it was praise to God. And the Bible says God inhabits the praise of his people. It means God steps in. Like God's presence is everywhere, but there is something we call like the kabod. The kabod is almost like the weight of God. It's almost like... People become, and there's an awareness of God. So when we praise him, there is an awareness that happens. When we sing, not just sing with our head, but when we sing and the song is coming from inside our belly, you know the time when you sing is coming from inside of you? There are times when you sing, you know that this thing, you can't, if somebody may ask you, what was the song you sang? You can't even remember the song. But there's another time that you sing, and you know that song that I was singing, it was coming from right inside of me. That's the kind of praise we are talking about. The one that is coming from the inside of your belly. And as David played those strings, the demons left Saul. That's how powerful his praise was. He was somebody who had learned to win victories. And over and over and over again, David would come and he would sing. And Psalms 103, he's writing, it's almost like a memory. He gets to this place where it's a little difficult to praise. He's in the, he's in the middle of his leadership and things are a little difficult. His sons and all of that, a lot is happening around him and he's, he's like in a place of depression. And so he has to tell himself, my soul, praise the Lord. Like I'm not asking you if you would like to praise. I know the circumstances around you, the things that are happening in your family are so bad. But you, David, you are going to praise the Lord. He says, my soul, praise. He's like giving himself a command. Praise the Lord. And all that is within me, praise his name. And that is so significant and so important because if we are going to wage war against the attacks that come against us, if you look at our world, you watch the TV, the, the first tendency is to just depression to sink in. And to just feel sad and feel weary and feel heavy and just say, okay, I'm just going to go to bed and just cover my blanket. But if you go to bed in that state, guess what? You're going to wake up even more depressed. The best thing to do is to say, my soul, praise the Lord. And if it means you're going to put a radio or put a TV or you're going to think of the song that you know or take a hymn or play on your keyboard and sing away that load from your shoulder. Sing off that depression from you. Because singing, our worship is a warfare. So if we are going to praise God, the first thing is that we have to command ourselves to praise. We have to, we have to put, because praise doesn't come easy when life is tough. So we have to command ourselves to praise. When life is tough, the most difficult thing to do is to sing. But guess what? Just start singing. 
You might sing the first song and it doesn't sound like it's going. Keep it the second one and then keep the third one. Before you realize you're dancing all by yourself and you're beating on that steering and you're like, by the time you go to school, people are like, how are you? You're like, oh yeah, it's a good day. But nobody knows how you left the house. You had left the house in depression, but you had sung, you sang your way into a place of freedom. Because the true freedom happens in your soul. The next thing we have to do that David shows us is that in the middle of the storm, we have to remember God's faithfulness in the past. He says, do not forget all his benefits. Do not forget all the things God has brought you through. Do not forget how God delivered you when you were sick. You know that thing you went through. Do not forget about that. Do not forget how you were raising your child and those days that things were difficult and you really wondered, was that child ever going to become something? And today, finally, God has blessed them. They have become much more than you thought. Do not forget what God has brought you through. At times, the only reason why we go down and the enemy is able to defeat us is because we forget so easily the victories God has won on our behalf. Remember the storms of life you went through. And remember how he brought you through. And if God brought you through that one, then he's going to do it the same, going to do it again today. The Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, he's the same today, he's the same forevermore. He doesn't change. So if he helped you yesterday, he is still the same. He is going to be ready to help you today. The storm of yesterday might have been different, but remembering how he helped you through that brings an attitude of gratitude. And helps you live a life of hope and expectation. Most often it's so easy to forget what God has done. You know there are some people, they will run to God when the trouble comes. And when the trouble is all over, then they step back and live life again like, like that. And then when another storm comes, then they run to God. That's, that's not God's desire. He wants us to be able to celebrate him when there is a storm, but then when there is not a storm. That in the time when there is no storm, we remember how he brought us through that storm and we are able to dance and we are able to sing like, yes, God, if it had not been for you, where would I have been? If it had not been for your grace, where would I have been? He took you out, you went to town and you came back. And by the time you came back, you heard there was an accident on the same road you just passed. And you're like, yes, Jesus, thank you. I'm not happy that the other person died, but if it had not been you, who spared my life, I might have been the one out there. Can we remember God's faithfulness? And I know some people are like, yeah, Pastor Vama, you don't even understand what you're talking. I don't really, when I look at my life, I don't really see anything God has done. I don't see, how can you ask, like, faithfulness? I don't see it. My life is a lot of storm and trouble and trouble. If you're really sincere, the fact that you are alive is a proof of God's faithfulness. So saying that your life is full of trouble is a lie because you are still here. You didn't wake yourself up. Somebody woke you up. So you are still on this side of life. But another thing that is so important that we, when, we, when we remember, that we have to remember as we praise is that we have to remember God's faithfulness, not just to us, but to others around us. And that's why stories become important. There are times when it's easy that when I'm going through a stress or a difficult time, I might easily forget what God has done to me. But when I remember, oh wow, I remember Donna, so last, a few months ago, she had, an she had an accident and we didn't even know how things were. But like today she was playing and I was like, yeah God, you are really so faithful. Like she is playing the keys and everything. I'm like, isn't this God amazing? When I remember God's faithfulness to her, then I'm like, God, if you did it for her, then I'm, I'm fine. You're going to do it for me too. I can rest because God did it for her then I know he will do it for me. He's not a partial God. So when we remember God's faithfulness to others, then we, are, we can rest and know that the things that God did for our brothers, the things that God did for our sisters, the things that God did for our uncles and our aunties, he is the same God. If he brought them through, then he will bring us through. The thing that God did for the past generation, he can still do it again. Then it leaves us in hope and in expectation. And especially in the time in which we are in our nation, where it looks like there is not just in our nation all around the world, it looks like there is chaos all around. And it's easy to lose hope and to feel like, well, everything is just all over. But look at what God has always done in the past. In the time of the Great Depression, guess what? There was a massive revival that drew people to God like never before. And then things changed and it shifted the economy and everything changed. 
God has done it in the past. He is still the same. He can still do it again. But we have to remember. We have to remember. So what happens when we praise? I'm going to read. If you have some time uh, when you go back home, if you could read the book of Second Chronicles chapter 20, they read that chapter. It is incredible how God fights for us. I want to use that as my, my closing t- text this morning. When we praise, what actually happens? Um, I'm going to give like a, a backdrop t- in this, in the, in the, in the text, or let me just read and then I'll give a backdrop of it. The Bible says, after this, the Ammonites, the Moabites and the Ammonites with some of the Meonites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom. From the other side of the Dead Sea, it is already in Hezezon Tamar. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord and proclaimed a fast for all Judah. I've skipped several verses. And in, 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 in Jehoshaphat's prayer, all he's doing is say, God, you did it to our fathers. You delivered. He's like reminding God of all the things God had done in the past, if you read through his prayer. And in verse, verse 15, as the people had prayed and raised their voices, this is what the Lord says. He said, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem, listen. King Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged by this mighty army. For the, for the battle is not yours but God's. Early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness to take over on the way Jehoshaphat. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, Listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets, and you will succeed. Now, let's go now to the real battle. What happens when they go to fight? After consulting the people, so what happens is uh, Jehoshaphat receives this news. Three armies, three different nations are coming against him at the same time. And Jehoshaphat realizes that he doesn't have the manpower to fight these three armies. Like they are going to crush them like nothing. But Jehoshaphat knows that he has one person that he can rely on. He has God. And they come in a place of fasting and prayer and they ask God, God, what do we do? And then God gives them the word and tells them, well, do not worry, the battle is not yours. I'm going to take care of this battle. I'm going to fight, fight for you. But Jehoshaphat is like, okay, God, how are you going to fight for us? And then there are details of of what happened, like the priests and all of that and... And but then in verse 21, we see the strategy that they use for this battle from verse 21, sorry. The Bible says, after consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. This is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures for Ever. Do you remember it's the same, almost part of what David was saying all the time. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. At every moment they began, at the very moment they began to sing and give praise. The Lord caused um, the armies of Ammon and Moab and Seir to start fighting among themselves. Other versions would say he caused an ambush against. And the armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. After they had destroyed the army of Seir, they began attacking each other. So when the army of Judah arrived, the lock out point, the lookout point in the wilderness, all they saw were dead bodies lying in the ground as far as their eyes could see. Not a single one of the enemy could escape. All they did was sing praise unto God. God was like, don't worry, guys. I've got this in my hands. I've got this battle fixed. Do you have some tambourines? Get your tambourines. Do you have some guitars? Get your guitars. Do you have any ability to dance? Put your dancing shoes on and let us praise. And the Bible says, as they began to sing, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Or whatever song that comes upon your mouth. As they raised their voices to God, their songs became an instrument in the hands of God that God could partner with to be able to defeat the enemy. There is so much that God can do when we praise. 
There is so much. The walls of Jericho, when they fell down, it wasn't because the army of Israel fought. It was because a group of people just walked around the wall and God changed the strategy. And they raised their voices and the shout and the walls came crumbling down. And the Bible says, uh, church history says that those walls, when they, they, they fell down, they formed a, like a staircase so the army of Israel could just walk inside with ease, without any stress. There is so much power in praise. There is so much power in praise. There are times when you have prayed and you have prayed and you have prayed. It's not changing. It might be time to change the strategy. When you've prayed for that son over and over and you've prayed for them over and over, you're like, God, would you change their lives? God, would you turn their lives around? I've been wanting, wanting to just see them saved and it looks like it's taking forever. Would you just sing over them? Because the Bible says even God sings over us. Just make a praise and just declare and sing over their lives, sing over their destiny and ha watch how God himself goes to war and fights those battles. When we take, I have my tambourine at home that I like, I don't know, I think maybe I'm a carol, they surely hear me making some noise at times. And when the, when the days come and I have, I'm like, okay, Velma, let's get this doing. And I have my tambourine on and I'm like, God, we've got this praise together. And I just sing and I dance all alone. I, I, I'm an African, so I like dancing. So, <laughs> and I sing and I dance all alone to God because guess what? There are times I might not even fully understand, but I just want to raise this praise to God because I know there are battles that him alone can fight. So you might feel like, Velma, I'm not really gifted. My voice, I don't have a singing voice. You can know some people will say that I don't have a singing voice. Guess what? You have a talking voice. You have a clapping hands. You have a dancing feet. Your, your dancing does not have to be straight before God. Nobody's going, it's not a competition. It's just to him. If you don't have a singing voice, play the YouTube. And let it play and you can dance before the Lord. And let that become your weapon of praise. But our praise is so powerful. There is nothing that when we praise God through that we can't overcome. And at times it's not only that maybe like, like in the case of, of Jehoshaphat that God will destroy the armies. But there are times God empowers you with strength like never before. And you're able to rise up with a certain boldness and you're saying, okay, now devil come again. If you've really, really ever praised God and you felt a breakthrough in your spirit, you know that there are times that when you praise you, it's almost like you become, you realize I am stronger than I truly thought. Because you have entered and you've pressed yourself away from your fear. You've pressed yourself away from the things that hold you back. And now you, it's almost like you become an, there's an awareness of who you truly are in God. And the devil is like, whoosh, I didn't know that they record. Finally, they have discovered who they are. I better move away from this corner. This is no longer a territory I should walk in. And then you, you are able to walk in that boldness, in that courage, and confront anything life brings to you. But this morning, I want to encourage us. No matter what that storm is, it might be that thing that is just heavy. It just presses your heart. There are times you wake up and you even want to try to talk to God and you're like, I don't even have words to say. I don't know exactly what to say. Why don't you just sing? Don't just sing like the words, but why don't you just sing it from the inside to God? Why don't you just raise your praise unto him and as you raise it, remember how faithful he has been to you in the past. How faithful he's been to others around you. And watch how different your own life first will be. The victory with which you walk in, the boldness with which you walk in. But then also watch how God starts changing the things around you. Because when you praise, you tell him, okay, I'm going to step back, God. Now, it's over to you. I can't fight this. Can you fight it on my behalf? There are people whose destinies are bound, tied. That is only our praise, our crazy dancing and foolishness before the Lord that will bring freedom to them. There are some circumstances that will not change until we are willing to praise and dance before our king. He truly is worthy. So when we gather around in this place and we sing and we praise, we are not just doing a church tradition. We are singing to the one 
who is able to break every storm and every chain. We are singing to the one that when we gather around in this place before him, he wants us to live free like we have never been before. May the all that comes as we raise those songs and those voices before him. And we sing off the weight we brought and then we live from here. We're like, I feel so free because the Lord himself inhabits the praises of his people. This morning, maybe there's someone who is watching online and you're like saying, okay, how can I praise myself through into victory? It starts first with a relationship with Jesus. If there is no relationship with Jesus, you can praise someone you don't know. We can only praise a God we know that we have a relationship with. So if you, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus and you're like saying, God, I want to start. I feel like I need, I need some victory in my life. I need to walk uh, and experience God in this way. I would like to pray with you this morning. And for those in the congregation, would you join me and let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are our victory. And thank you that your ways are not our ways. The way you fight is not the way we humans fight. We want to always bring out our sword and everything, but now you teach us to praise you with a dance. So we come and we just give our lives to you. We say, have your way. Come take over our being and teach us to fight and to praise even when we don't feel like because we know that is where the victory is. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen.